Hello. Um, real busy today, but I got something that I'm gonna want to show you, RJ, how to do. And it is uh, turning on and homing the Easy Track SX, the two axis uh, two axis mill. So I'm gonna spin you around the other way. Follow along. I was kind of lonely at the shop. I was talking to myself. Had the radio on, but I was like, might as well just shoot a little video on this. That way, uh, if you get this machine, you'll need to know how to do this because it's uh, it's magical. You can make all sorts of stuff this machine. It's my second favorite machine in the shop other than the lathe. So I'm gonna spin you around and we're gonna do fire up of the Easy Track SX. Okay, there it is. So the first thing you wanna do is figure out what you're gonna do. So I've got this flange here that I have to modify with some pusher bolts and some, uh, look to me like some uh, dowel pins for location. But uh, here's what I do every time before you fire it up. Give it a juice on the, on the easy lube. Kind of make sure all your, your ways are looking nice and don't have another coating of stuff on them. Uh, there's your uh, mister. It, uh, it's got fluid in it. You've got way lube. Just reach back behind here and fire this dude up. Boom. There's an air cleaner you gotta blow out down there every now and then, but, and do not ever take the floppy out. It's a big floppy. Don't take it out. Don't take it out. Leave it in there. Because it boots off the floppy. So, Gave the way a little pump. Come over here to the control. And it says, run, set up, utility. I don't know. It's, it's had better days and worse days as far as startup sequences. But this is how it's been for a long time. Um, push F1. Pushing of the F1. Now we'll say exit for boot. Just push enter. And let it do, let it do its, uh, its little computer thing. I'll let you watch this. And the speed, the awesome. We're running at 640 kilobytes. Memory size is 24K. <laughs> Here we go. You're talking high memory now. So what it's doing is it's going through its little log, it's a uh, smart drive, executed, expanded. This is how it boots up off that floppy drive. So just let it do this. Right now is a good time to uh, oil it and put some whey lube on the, on the slides and Kind of brush stuff off, maybe give it a wipe down. But it's expanding files. Easy track dot exe and then boom. So at this point. You're gonna hit move absolute, which is this grid corresponds to your 10 key over here. Right there. If I buy a new one of those, I don't need this one hanging down here. But I haven't done that yet. But so you hit your, did you hear the click? Servos just came on. So now it says retract quill, Lazizel, well, see? Tracked quill. It doesn't read Z axis. So all you got to do right now is hit home. Get this out of here. And it'll go home. Make sure your Z's up and you're not hitting nothing. I always keep the oil brush down there out of the way. But this will pinch up against that handle. 
So pull this away. Only once or twice does has it not ever homed. It should home real close to real close to that right there. Look at that. There's where we're at. And it says home. You can home it right there. Uh, scape. Set X, Y, Z. This, this is, you don't, it doesn't even need to do this. So there, home, home. Turning on and homing the easy track. So at this point right now, uh, you need to hit power off, which is going to turn the servos off. I'm just going to set you up over here for a second. And I'm going to do my thing. Because I think at this point, I can show you. At this point, we can manually move or you can go into jog mode. So like I said, this corresponds to the tent key. So jog X, see how this moves, move the table, or you can push this button and it will wrap it. Then you probably saw it shaking up. So we've got to indicate that bore on that flange. But every time you move it in a powered motion, you need to power off the servos before you can move it again manually. And RJ, it's just like you talked about, the X and the Y on the Cartesian coordinate system. This is your X and this is your Y. And it's right there in the numbers. So at this point, what you can do is uh, lots of things. You could say that's indicated right there, and we'll do this. We'll say, okay, that's indicated. I'm gonna put you right here. And watch this. So I'm gonna go set X, Y, Z, zero, zero, zero. That's fine, we're gonna call that zero. And then I'm gonna say, do an event. And I'm going to say, uh, let's uh, drill a bolt circle. Cool. The radius of the bolt circle it's going to ask me for right up here. And I'm going to say uh, two inches. I'm going to say from the middle, from the middle. You always put a negative uh, value in your depth. Even though it doesn't read Z, it's just two axes. If you don't put a value in there, it, it won't even stop. It just goes this, 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 this. So then we can, there's where you start from. That's fine. And then how many holes? Uh, eight or six? Let's do five. Let's do a weird thing. Okay, that's fine. First hole. Second hole. Listen. Tulsa, Oklahoma. Storm sirens. It's not siren head. Could be siren head, but it's not. Good job. I built that yesterday. They're gonna put a big aquarium on it. No, it's an aquarium stand. It's an aquarium stand for Zebco. They're gonna, I guess, gonna put like thing for fishing lures up in there. It's got a motor that swishes water around. And yeah, that's uh, they're storm sirens. So, anyways, let's get back in there real quick. Finish this video out. I don't want it to be too long. I want you to hear siren head though. So yeah. Um, we were back on drilling the, uh, so then there's the next hole in the pattern. There's the next hole in the pattern. And then you're home, you're done. Exit, move absolute, zero, zero, zero. Go back home. But it does all sorts of cool stuff. Like, uh, okay, I'll just show you here. Just a couple of them. Uh, do a vent. Middle rectangle, that's always a good one. Um, 
outside, inside, or a pocket. Radius blends, approaches, zip, 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 outside or inside. That was a good one. Um, uh, save points, a really good one. Mill circle, so it'll go outside or inside. Mill arc, if you just are sitting in one spot, you want to mill an arc, there you go, you just two points, it figures it. Uh, facing, that's the one we use a lot. You just start at the bottom left corner and tell it how far to go, how many passes to go that way. Uh, drill in a row, drill in a box, mill a line. If you just want to go from here to that side to that side, you can do that real easy. So I just wanted to make a little quick video of how to fire this thing up. But you always have to remember after you did a move, got to turn the servos off before you go back into manual operation. And then this is a ball screw uh, easy track. Uh, the, there's ball screws underneath, so you don't, you don't really have any, there's no backlash. See, I can go back and forth and not even barely move my, so uh, favorite machine, second favorite machine. Gotta keep it tidy. It uses the quick switch tooling. Uh, I got a little bit, enough to get by real good. Keep it kind of cleaned up a little bit, but there you go. Uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to use, I've got to clock this flange. So I'll use some pins and a piece of tool steel on that, and I will indicate that, set the... I'm just using the stupid spacer to hold it. I'm gonna do all my locations from telling the, the, the computer where to go. But anyways, this is the Bridgeport Easy Track uh, startup procedure. See you next time.